Welcome back to Making It TV Presents. On today's show, we're talking about how crucial it is for enterprises both large and small to foster relationships to grow their business. Well, you know, Dr. Sandra Thomas takes the long view of that concept. She's seen that by mentoring young scholars. She's creating a future generation of potential entrepreneurs. She also used her relationships to help start her foundation, the Quality of Life Center. She called upon all of her connections, her friends, politicians, and community leaders. The idea was to assist children who have low incomes but high grades. Well, it's not an easy road for these youngsters, you know. Some are so economically disadvantaged that they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Some are even homeless, yet all manage to maintain a 3.5 GPA. Their success in the Bright Future Scholarships program has been nothing short of amazing. 100% of them have enrolled in college, and it was the children themselves who pushed for Bright Futures. I'm always excited about being a youth leader because getting to incorporate other people's ideas and help them grow is what I want to do with my life. I just want to be a blessing to others. So I think being in leadership is going to help me do that. The Bright Future Scholars program came out of a phone call that I received from a young scholar. I didn't know her. And she said, Dr. Thomas, there's a bunch of young academic achievers who kind of gotten together, found each other, and we're having a meeting. And would you come and be with us? And I thought about it and I thought, Oh dear, I have something to do that day. But the child was persistent, as young leaders should be. So after several calls, I said, honey, I'll stop by. Dr. Sandra Thomas was introduced to 40 young scholars who were looking for guidance, encouragement, and mentorship. And I went in and she said, uh, I said, why am I here? And she said, we were told that if we got you here, you would help us. Dr. Thomas was taken aback by one young man who felt that he had many strikes against him, including being homeless. That turned me all the way around because my thought was, if this child can make straight A's with that kind of an insurmountable odd, then how could I turn my back on children that determined to succeed? So from that moment on, this program came into existence. When Dr. Thomas started the program, it didn't take long for her to realize that she needed help. The group grew rapidly, quickly growing from 40 youngsters to 100. She had to leverage existing relationships for broader support for Bright Futures. It was my plight and thought that if you were leaders in our community, that you should be more than willing to help develop young leaders to take your place as time goes on. One of the opportunities I saw with the Bright Future Scholars program is it was a totally different take on mentoring the young people. Their position was to take kids who have the aspirations to do well, take the kids who are trying to do well in school, take the kids who have dreams, work with those kids, mentor them, and help them succeed in obtaining their goals. I went to the Congress people, I went to the Senators, I went to the Assembly people, I went to the County Supervisor, who is the Honorary Dean, Mike Antonovich. I went to the Chief of Police, I went to the Sheriff's Captain, I went to the Superintendent, I went to PCC's President. I went all over the community and not one of them refused. Dr. Thomas has over 20 mentors who share their experiences and also offer opportunities for the youngsters to work in their offices. This assists them in preparation for college and better prepares them for real work environments. And seeing young people take shape and decide what they want to do in their lives is very exciting. And so to have an organization like this that uh, works closely with young people and uh, exposes them to whether it's government or uh, local city issues or local businesses or the utilities. Um, I think it's a great thing for, for young people to get exposed to. I grew up in South Central Los Angeles and one of the things that helped me in my youth was someone taking the time to step forward and tell me that I could do well. The experience has changed me so much because I've met wonderful young people who have pushed me to be better and then meeting the mentors has helped me also because they've offered me a lot of it, personal advice. They've come and talked to me. They've been very personal with me. And I've had a great opportunity in this program. 
It takes passion to get a nonprofit organization started and off the ground, but real finances are needed to sustain it and continue to keep the doors open. When it comes to financing, we have been really, really blessed in that the community sees a need for what we do. We've had people to just volunteer. Some of our funding is through foundations. The county helps us. The city helps us. Southern California Edison has been a great asset to us. They have come aboard and really offered things uh, individually as well as collectively. Many of the Southern California Edison uh, employees are personal donors um, to this program. And I'm very grateful to Edison. At the last uh, graduation, they were so kind as to walk in and hand us a check this big for $20,000, which was sizable uh, to help uh, these young people. The Bright Future Scholars have a track record for academic achievement that is star quality. What I attribute as our major accomplishment is that since our inception in 2004. Every senior in this program has attended or is attending college. So we have a 100% success rate in the program for advancing children into further into higher education. And I think that's pretty much unheard of. Dr. Thomas offers some words of wisdom. Do it from your heart. Nonprofit is not an easy business. Do it from your heart because you're not going to get rich. So just make sure that you have the passion and the desire and the determination to carry it on yourself. You know, Southern California Edison was introduced to Bright Futures when they bought a table at a graduation dinner. They were so impressed by the organization that they became one of their largest donors. Well, coming up, you know, if you had billions to spend in the energy sector, how and where would you spend it? Meet the man from Southern California Edison who makes those decisions every day. He's Walter Rhodes, Vice President of Operations and Chief Procurement Officer from Edison. We'll be right back with Walter. <music> 